my breasts are so engorged. <laughs> What's up, what's new? Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting video. Well, for me. In my last video, you saw that I had a baby and I had a nice little healthy baby boy. He was eight pounds and five ounces and 20.5 inches long. Whew, that's a big baby. And he has been a dream boat ever since. So I'm a little nervous to pick him up because he's been sleeping. And if I pick him up, I feel like he's going to want to eat. So this is kind of like a meet my baby slash two week postpartum update to let you guys know on how I'm doing and what you gotta look forward to, I guess, when you have a baby. Today is February 28th. I had my baby on February 20th. No, that's my birthday. February 12th. So it's been a while. I can't believe it's been two weeks already. <laughs> I want him to stay little forever. So obviously with these postpartum updates, you guys want to see how the body is working. Well, my abdomen has actually almost gone back all the way, which I am really stoked about. Means less working out for me. But here's my body. I have diapers on still. Don't judge. Just a little tiny bump now. Just kind of looks like a pouch, which I'm not going to complain about. And for my belly, oh, look at a little bow. Yeah, I have always had this line. I forget what it's called. I don't know. It's a line that you get when you get pregnant. Some people don't. And I got stretch marks, which, oh, do not look so good. But you know what? They will fade in time. I am not that upset about them. I was when I first saw them. I was a little depressed. I'm not going to lie. But they will fade I carried a baby, but yeah, they're a little bit purple. I didn't think I gained this many. I thought it was only like, I don't know, three or four, but I guess when the baby's out, things start to settle and you see what you got. And then I did get a little bit on the side. I've always had stretch marks, but they kind of like tip topped at the top there. And yeah, that's my belly update. Am I a little bit nervous for showing that? Yeah, just a little, but it's reality now. There's nothing much I can really do. Unless I have like millions of dollars, I'm sure I can get them lasered off, but I don't. But to have him in my life, oh, I'm gonna get emotional. They are definitely worth it. They are my tiger stripes, scars, whatever you wanna call them. You know how they say you have a trophy wife when she looks good? These are my trophy scars. As for the lady bits down below, well, <laughs> I did end up getting a second degree tear, which is not bad considering baby got stuck at the shoulders. Like the doctor told me that I didn't tear when the head came out, which I was so stoked about. But then she's like, yeah, but then the shoulders came and you got a little bit of a tear. But it has not been all that bad. I am not gonna lie. Like I would say maybe on the fourth or fifth day, I started to really feel of the stitches and it was mostly when I was like moving around and doing things that's when I could really feel it but I had dermoplast which I'm sure everybody knows what dermoplast is we can't get it here in Canada but Greg's aunt lives in the States so she shipped it to me because I kept hearing how awesome this product was for postpartum oh, man it was a lifesaver that's for sure go get it I know that in the States I think that the hospital for them provides it but here in Canada they don't do anything like that, at least not at my local hospital. As for bleeding, I have pretty much stopped bleeding a little bit, still a little bit there. I could go back to just like panties and panty liners, but <laughs> my bladder is a little bit of an issue right now. Because I had an epidural, you have a catheter that gets put in because you know, you're just probably end up peeing yourself. When the birthing was all done, I had the catheter taken out. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> you won't be able to control your bladder at all. Thank God that I had these diapers there at the hospital. Like I knew I was going to wear them, but I didn't think that I was going to absolutely need them. That what the hospital had provided, like the mesh underwear, pads, and the long ass panty liner, that I would be fine. But <laughs> when I started realizing that anytime I sat up, I would pee myself. Anytime I moved to the side, I'd pee myself. I was pretty much matching my baby. It was a joy, let me tell you. <laughs> Ask the doctors if it was normal. It is completely normal. A lot of people don't have control after they've given birth in that area. So it was a fun adventure, I will tell you that. So fast forward today, the two weeks, I have 
pretty much all control of my bladder again, thankfully. Because the doctors did tell me that it can take up to three to six months to have complete control again. Oh man, mm -mm. I will not be able to do that. So thanking the bladder gods, they helped me out here. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, when I sneeze, cough, or Greg makes me laugh hard or anybody makes me laugh hard, I do pee a little bit uncontrollably. As far as moving around though, I got it, I got it. What is next? I don't know if this is gonna be too much TMI for you guys, but the pooping stage. Hmm. I watched a lot of postpartum videos before I went into labor to see what exactly I would be getting myself into. And a lot of people were scared of the pooping stage, like the first poop. I never really thought about it because I was like, it's poop, it's just gonna come on out. But then I forgot you have to push. And I had stitches near that area, so I was a little bit terrified. I had brought some Restorlax, I think that's what it's called, a laxative in my bag just so that I wouldn't have that issue. So as soon as we got to our like stay room after the labor room, I guzzled back a big glass of it just so that I would not have an issue. And oh my god, thank god I did because it kind of, this is gonna be really gross so mute it if you don't want to hear it, slipped right out. I didn't have to do much pushing so that was awesome and I never really had an issue with pooping after that like don't get me wrong I was like holding myself up with the bar that they have there and then on the counter just to make sure I didn't tear my stitches open by accident or something I was scared I was scared shitless hmm, no pun intended so when you are pushing baby out you are going to be pushing like you have to poop I did not poop yay thankfully when giving birth I mean like you know this situation. You get hemorrhoids. They suck. Two weeks before I had given birth, I actually got rid of all of my hemorrhoids. I was shocked that they weren't there. Ooh, baby might be waking up. No, we're good. What was I saying? Oh, right, hemorrhoids. Yeah, mine had completely disappeared. I think it was because I had an addiction for skimmed milk. I don't know what it was. I don't know. <laughs> like, I know that I like my skimmed milk, but I was drinking maybe like three or four, four liter <laughs> jugs a week. Oh, I know that sounds so gross, but oh, it tasted so good. And I honestly think that that had something to do with softening my poopy, that I didn't have hemorrhoids to deal with. Come birth, I got them back. Yeah, they came back with a vengeance. Thankfully, I have not felt them. Like, they haven't been extremely itchy, maybe like once or twice throughout the two weeks. So if you're worried about hemorrhoids, I would say drink a lot of skim milk. It's really gonna help you. Mm, what can I talk about next? Breastfeeding. <laughs> it has been a struggle for me a little bit. Not so much for baby latching. It has been a struggle for the pain. <sighs> Obviously when you're there on the labor delivery bed, they get the baby to latch and he latched like quick. No problem, came out hungry, wanted the boob. He was eager for some nip nip. So you have to put baby on your boob every like two to three hours just so that they can get that colostrum. All that fun goody bonding stuff that you have with your baby. Third day, oh, I wanted to like die a little bit. It was intense. What I'm going to tell you future mamas right now, start pinching your nipples like no tomorrow. Or if you get into the kinky stage, you know, ask your boyfriend to start sucking on them. But I would say start pinching them because oh, I am still having the pain. I do think I actually might have thrush in my right boob because my left boob has kind of gotten used to it. Like it's a little bit painful, but not as bad as it used to be. It's kind of feeling like a little bit of a massage afterwards when he's on there latching, except when he starts to pull. Oh mama. With my right, it is like stinging needle still. Like after he latches on and he's there for a bit, it's fine. It, it's the beginning of the latch that just, <laughs> it's painful. It's really, really Really painful and I already have sensitive nipples so I think that might be a little bit of me having a hard time adjusting to the breastfeeding stage thankfully I have like the Komotomo bottles that are kind of like a substitute for the, the booby that doesn't give nipple confusion I have been using the bottle with my breast milk in it for the last two or three days just so I can give my nips a little bit of a break I did feed him maybe like twice on my breast to see exactly where my nips were at at that point to see if it's still painful and that's when I figured found out that my left is not as painful but the right man the right thank god I have a doctor's appointment for him that they can also check my booby out to see how 
she doing? How she doing? Other than that, for postpartum, nothing much has really happened. Oh, I think baby's waking up. Are you waking up? Are you waking up? Oh, I think you're waking up. Are your uterus contracting afterwards? Oh yeah, there's some times where it's a little bit painful. Like you feel like you're gonna be going into a little bit of a intense contraction. I was still getting those until about four days ago. Then they kind of like stopped. It put me to a point where I was bending over my bed a little bit because they were intense. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I haven't experienced any hair loss like I've heard some people do. My hair is still very much intact. Although I am wearing a toque today, but that's because I'm lazy. I think that's pretty much about it. There's nothing much more that I can talk about my postpartum experience other than mentally I'm okay so far I've had a couple breakdowns one of them was because I was upset that I couldn't breastfeed him because I love that bonding experience and that he is pretty much here I've found myself crying a few times just looking at him because oh, he's so beautiful but I really haven't gotten much of the baby blues sleeping's been okay I find myself waking up with the baby a lot more than Greg that's for sure I think that's more of like a control issue for me because I like to know exactly how much he's eating what he's doing that type of stuff like I know I have to let myself rest which I did have a nap before this lovely video it was only like half an hour but honestly guys when you have a baby your first couple weeks I'm pretty sure at least for me having that half an hour nap oh it feels like you've had like three or four hours that's for sure other than that yeah I think that's pretty much it baby's starting to wake up so I guess we can finally introduce you guys to my little baby boy oh yeah that's a big grunt no, I know, hey. Oh, I still can't believe I have a baby. Oh, oh, look at that face. Look at that face. You can open your eyes for everybody. I find babies so funny. They're very entertaining, that's for sure. Okay, so he's gonna sleep still for a bit, which is totally fine. I'm not gonna complain about that. <laughs> You pooping or something? I think he's pooping. I think he's pooping. Anyways, before he gets really super fussy, this is Baby Rock. We named him after Greg's great grandpa. And his middle name is Natalie, which is after my grandpa. And Morris is after his grandpa. So, Rock, Natalie, Morris, Fontaine. <laughs> I can't get over the noises. They're so cute. Someone took a poopy. I can smell it. So this is our little angel. Beautiful. You made me work for you, that is for sure. His first week was also very interesting. Not only getting stuck and then having to stay an extra night in the hospital to check and see that his meconium didn't affect his lungs because the way they described it to me is that because he pooped inside me and it's mixed with the amniotic fluid and he breathes in the amniotic fluid, that it could make his lungs sticky. So that's why they wanted to originally take him out within 24 hours because he was a happy baby swimming in his feces. He was able to stay in there so I wouldn't have to do an emergency C-section or anything like that. So he at least let me do have natural labor with an epidural, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know, but he let me have a regular birth, not a C-section. Oh, are we dreaming? Are we dreaming? Hmm? So yeah, extra night in the hospital. And then as we were leaving, he was on the higher scale of jaundice. It wasn't to a point where he needed to be under the blue light. We were still able to go home, but we had to do a couple more hospital visits. I'm driving back and forth next two or three days, I think it was, just to see his levels. So he was climbing higher in the jaundice scale. The way that they had the line is that the middle line, if he was higher than that, then he would eventually have to be put on a blue light. After his second checkup after the hospital, he was a little bit higher than the line, so they told us to start feeding him formula because my milk still had not come in. And we had to get him pooping and peeing like crazy. The stress, because he had not peed for like 12 hours, and I was freaking out, Greg was freaking out, and thankfully, Greg's sister was here, who is a nurse, and she's had three babies herself, that she had a great idea that we should give him a bath. So she gave him his first bath home, and then my boyfriend came screaming into the bathroom, being like, he peed. Oh, 
it was like the best moment ever. Like Greg and I started crying because we were so happy that he had his pee because if he hadn't peed by 11 o'clock that night, we had to take him to emergency, get looked at at labor and delivery. So that was a rough couple days after him being home. Then after a oh, couple days after that, we get a nice little phone call from AHS saying that someone in our after birth room had tested positive for the coronavirus. Yeah, I was not happy. I was really scared. I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. Greg and I had to go get tested and same with Rock. He had to get tested. Thankfully, Greg was holding Rock because if I was, I probably would have lost it because I was already freaking out when they put the swab up his nostril. Thankfully, we all tested negative, but we had to pretty much quarantine until today, February 28th. So <sighs> what a great first couple weeks of your life, hey? Not like we're going out anyways, but Still, not fun, not fun. Oh, someone's getting hungry. You getting hungry? I'm getting hungry. Let's go make some lunch. <laughs> and tomorrow we finally get to leave the house and we are going to make our first road trip tomorrow out to St. Paul. It's about a two and a half hour drive. So this is going to be interesting. It might be even three hours because it is snowing galore today. And he also has his first doctor's appointment because we had to cancel his one week checkup because of the Corona scares. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here because he is starting to get more squirmy and we both need to eat. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like, and you know, we'll see you in the next one. You say bye rock. Say bye rock. <laughs> see you guys.